Welcome to another edition of the Invisible Wheelchair Interview Podcast. I'm Donald Grodoff, family coach with FamilyOCD.com, FocusedHealthyFamily.com, and of course, InvisibleWheelchair.com. In the Invisible Wheelchair Interviews, I get the wonderful chance to interview some of the experts with obsessive compulsive disorders, professionals that treat OCD, people who are going through or have been through OCD, parents and caregivers of those suffering from OCD, and of course anyone that advocates for treatment of OCD. My goal of these interviews is to inform people on all aspects of OCD and bring about awareness of obsessive compulsive disorder. Please remember that I am not a doctor, therapist, or counselor, and the content, information, resources, and ideas that are talked about and brought up here in these interviews are not necessarily the views and opinions of myself, Family OCD, Focused Healthy Family, and Invisible Wheelchair Podcast. And I always recommend to seek additional professional help in finding solutions for yourself. You can find out more about me at FamilyOCD.com, FocusedHealthyFamily.com, and InvisibleWheelchair.com. This podcast interview was recorded March 14, 2018. Today I have the privilege of introducing you to Dr. Obramowitz. Jonathan S. Obramowitz, Ph.D., is a professor of psychology and neuroscience and research professor of psychiatry at the University of North Carolina, UNC. He is also the director of the UNC Anxiety and Stress Disorders Clinic. His research and clinical interest are focused on the nature and treatment of obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, and other problems related to anxiety and fear. Dr. Obramowitz has published over 300 research articles, books, and book chapters, and he is the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Obsessive and Compulsive and Related Disorders. Dr. Obramowitz is a member of the International Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Foundation's Scientific and Clinical Advisory Board. He is a past president of the Association of Behavioral and Cognitive Therapies, ABCT. His service and contributions to the field have been recognized through awards from the Mayo Clinic Department of Psychiatry and Psychology, Division 12 of the American Psychological Association, the National Institute of Mental Health, and the International Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Foundation. Dr. Abramowitz regularly presents research papers and clinical workshops on OCD and other anxiety disorders and their treatment at regional, national, and international professional conferences. With that said, let's go to the interview now. Well, Dr. Abramowitz, I'm so happy that you're part of this here on the Invisible Wheelchair and that my audience gets a chance to uh, get introduced to you and to the IOCDF Foundation. Uh, So welcome and thank you. Thanks for having me, Donald. It's a pleasure to be here today. So what I'd like to get into first, with my guest, I always like to have kind of a maybe some type of personal story so my audience can get a feel of who you are. Uh, so if there's something you could share with us, a little story about yourself or how you got into this, that would be wonderful. Sure thing. I, I went to graduate school at the University of Memphis, um, which is really really where I got introduced to uh, the whole concept of uh, OCD, uh, cognitive behavior therapy, exposure therapy, which is the, the most effective treatment uh, for, for this problem. The very first patient or client that I was ever assigned to see in my clinical training was uh, a woman who had OCD. She was a gentle, you know, older woman who had these thoughts about, you know, losing control and doing all sorts of violent things. And I remember, you know, meeting her and kind of thinking, what 
what am I going to do? How am I going to help her? My supervisor told me to go to the literature and read about exposure and response prevention uh, for OCD. This was the early 90s and the field, you know, just kind of beginning to develop around um, people really didn't know what OCD was very much in, in those days. Um, and I went to the literature, read all about it, met with my supervisor, went in, and it was remarkable how the therapy was able to help this, this woman just get over her problem and learn that, you know, it's okay to, to think these kinds of thoughts. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do anything uh, terrible. Um, and she didn't have to do all of her praying and checking rituals and things like that. And it was just remarkable. Someone who really, her, her life had become very circumscribed. She had difficulty going out of the house, interacting with, with her relatives and her close friends. Now, all of a sudden, this woman's world was expanding. And that was really my introduction to, to OCD and to its treatment. And after that, I was, I was hooked. I, I wanted to work with more people. I wanted to do research on this problem. And um, that's what kind of got me started. One of the things that, that I uh, was very happy that you were coming on for is that you are part of the board of the, the foundation, the IOCD uh, uh, mm -hmm. Foundation. I want to be able to have my audience understand what uh, the IOCD Foundation is all about because I think it's a very important foundation for those that suffer with OCD. I, I would love if you could tell just a little bit of story maybe about how it got started and then we can go into how all the different things that it does for the community. Definitely. So I'm a member of the Scientific and Clinical Advisory Board um, for, the, um, for the IOCDF, International OCD Foundation. And I wasn't um, around when it, when it got started. I, I wasn't a you know, founding member or anything like that. But my understanding is that it was developed by a group of people who had OCD. It was developed in, in New England in the, I think, New Haven area. These were folks who, who, who had OCD, and it was the 1980s, and like I said before, people really didn't know much about OCD. There were not a lot of studies on, on treatment, and these folks kind of banded together and said, let's, you know, let's start a, a foundation, let's start an organization where we're going to advocate for people who have OCD, give everybody a place you know, who has this problem, a place to belong. There was no World Wide Web or anything like that. So, you know, um, they had this grassroots organization and they got, um, they were lucky to find some psychiatrists and psychologists who had done some of the early research to get involved in, in this organization. And I think, you know, gradually over time, uh, it, it grew and grew to what it is today, which as we'll talk about, is just, just a remarkable organization. It's interesting to know that, you know, it takes one that's gone through it to really be able to build an organization like this. And I think that that makes it so much more credible when you got somebody that's been through it. Let's talk a little bit about how it affects or how it, it goes out into the community, uh, the OCD sufferers themselves, and what, is, what can it do for them? So the IOCDF has, they are um, working on a number of, of fronts, one of them being patient advocacy. I, I guess in, in my mind, that's one of the main goals of the organization is to help people and their families understand what OCD is, to help them to recognize it. Uh, because again, it's still, even though it's, it's one of the more common psychological conditions, it's definitely under-recognized. Lots of doctors and mental health professionals don't know how to recognize OCD. So the IOCDF helps folks to, to recognize what it is. They have trainings for mental health clinicians and, and for nurses and, and other fields, allied health uh, fields as well, and, and medical professionals. They raise money for um, the research on OCD. They have a grant program where uh, very, it's a very competitive program where folks can write in if they do research, submit an application, and these applications get reviewed, and the best ones then uh, get funded with money that the IOCDF uh, has, has raised. They train clinicians as well, a, a very vibrant training program. They have a program that's called the Behavior Therapy Institute and Behavior Therapy Training Institute. And they go around the country several times a year and they put on these, you know, three or four day programs uh, where clinicians in the, the local area can go and get intensive training in how to deliver effective cognitive behavior therapy for, for OCD, the trainings are given by experts in the field that the organization flies all around the country to give these wonderful, you know, lectures and workshops. I've been a part of this too. And you get to 
to work with people who bring their, their patients, their, their, the histories of their patients, not the actual patients, and discussing that. So they do a lot of terrific training for clinicians. Um, and certainly, I would say that the centerpiece, uh, the, the crown jewel, I guess, of the organization is um, the, the annual conference, which is usually over the summer in July or August. And that's where there are, you know, it's an opportunity for clinicians, for researchers, and people with OCD to, to get together, to learn from one another. It's a little bit of like a family reunion every year. The same people and, of course, new people every year go, go back. And so you see the, tend to see the same people over and over again. And, and I, I haven't missed one of these for, oh, it's going on 20 years now. Um, but it's an opportunity for researchers to share what they're learning with each other. It's an opportunity for clinicians to, to get training and to give trainings. And it's an opportunity for people with OCD to learn more about the condition, get help. Um, there are all sorts of programs for, for kids, for family members of people who have OCD. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful um, three or four day uh, experience. And so I know there's one coming up. Can you give us some information about the, the one that's coming up this summer? Sure. So the one that's coming up this summer is in Washington, D.C. Well, we should probably get the dates uh, on the podcast at, uh, somewhere. I don't have them um, offhand. I can, I can. I'll put them up on, uh, on the website along with, you know, the podcast and have it up there. So, yes. So the, these go from, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, they usually begin on a Thursday uh, or, or a Friday, and then they go through, through Sunday. And it's at the, uh, you know what, we should, we should also look up, I guess. I'll get all that information, yeah, yeah. about it, the, way, the details of time and when and all that. What are the things that, like, for instance, a family, an OCD family that has a child or whatever with OCD, what kind of activities can they be involved in there? So there, there are activities where parents can learn about, you know, how do I manage, you know, my son or daughter has OCD, uh, how, how do I manage this in, in the home? How do I look for a good therapist? What do I do if my child doesn't want to get help or has resisted uh, trying to get help? How can I, you know, around, around the home, you know, parents and, and siblings often want to kind of lean in and, and help the loved one with OCD. Let me make it easier for you. Let me do rituals for you. Let me avoid things so you don't have to get distressed. Let me try to take your anxiety away. Uh, it turns out that in the short term, that seems like a, a helpful strategy, but in the long run, that can kind of maintain the problem and kind of keep it going. And so uh, parents can learn about what are some kind of uh, more healthy, more helpful strategies to use in, in the home. Um, there are lots of programs for kids alone with OCD. So how to recognize what's OCD and what is it. There are lots of programs for families together. And there are lots of programs for parents without their, their children to learn about, you know, what, what can we do to help uh, our, our son or daughter. I'm not sure on this, but it, is everyone kind of approachable there? So you can go to the, like Jeff uh, Szymanski, you know, I mean, is, is it that kind of a, where it's just that anybody can approach and talk and it, it's very open like that? That's one of the wonderful things about this conference is that the leaders of the, of the organization are visible. They're walking around. They, they bend over backwards to make sure that everyone is, you know, comfortable and especially folks coming there who have OCD. You know, you, you, there are going to be uh, special accommodations that have to be made, things like that. The leaders of the organization bend over backwards. People um, who are leaders in the field in terms of research, in terms of their, their clinical work, people who have, you know, written all sorts of books and research articles, they're right there to, to talk to. And I know when, when I go, I've, I've written some books, so my name gets recognized. People are just happy to kind of, you know, pull me aside and say, hey, I have a question. I have OCD. What should I do? And, and everyone is just very happy to, to help out and, and answer uh, questions that people have. It's a, it's a very inviting uh, atmosphere, really different than any of the other conventions that, that I go to, the professional meetings that I go to, because here we have people with OCD. We have the clinicians and the researchers, and everyone's all you know, they're, they're together, and um, you don't see that in a lot, of other, a lot of other professional conferences. You know, my, my daughter has OCD, and, and my younger son has it, and my daughters, we're pretty sure that it, it was pandas, and mm -hmm. this was back, this was in 2010, so it, we didn't understand it at that time. We found out much later. Does IOCD, uh, the, the foundation, does it 
recognize pandas and pans, and is it doing research on it? Do you know? It, it is. It, it, it funds grants every year looking at that exact um, aspect of, of OCD. Pans, pandas, and some of the folks that, that are the folks who kind of develop the, the idea of this condition um, are there and are always giving workshops and happy to speak with parents and help them, you know, figure out is, is, that, is that what it is and where do we go from here? Is there anything else that you would feel that you'd like them to know about the foundation or even about yourself? Because you are in practice yourself. You teach, you research, you also treat. Uh, is there anything in particular that you would like to, uh, a message you would like to get out to the audience about the foundation or yourself? Sure. Well, let me start with the, the foundation. You know, they also have a terrific website. Um, and I, I, www.iocdf.org. Um, they have lots of resources for people with OCD and, and their loved ones, for clinicians also. One of the things that I like most is that they've got a find a therapist uh, resource where, yes. you know, if I, so I see people with OCD from all over the country or they, they're calling me or things like that to get, um, you know, to get help or ask questions. And I'm often using that, that website to find folks who are um, not only members of the organization or the foundation, but have also gone through the, the training that they offer. And so they keep track of, of who's gotten the training. And, you know, we know that those folks then have, you know, a specific leg up on your average clinician as far as someone who really understands OCD and, and, uh, and knows how to do effective treatment or, or use the, the right medications because not everyone knows how to do that. As far as myself, you know, so I, I'm just a guy who likes to be able to do lots of different things. And one of the great things about being a clinical psychologist is that you, you do get to kind of every day is, is a little bit different. So I, I teach at the University of North Carolina. Um, I teach undergraduate classes. Uh, I teach graduate students. I, I work with graduate students who are training to be clinical psychologists who are interested in anxiety and, and OCD. And it's uh, very rewarding to help them you know, work with uh, patients that come into our clinic and, and teach them how to use effective treatments and how to, you know, recognize and diagnose and, and help folks with this condition. In our clinic, in our research clinic, our lab, we also do research looking at, you know, evaluating the effects of treatments. How can we make, we have a good treatment in exposure therapy, but how can we make it even better? That's one of the things that we work on. We also work on studying different aspects of OCD and how can we understand it better? How can we match individuals to the, the treatments that they need? And then I also am fortunate that I get to use what we learn in, in, the, in our lab in a, a small private practice that I have that's almost exclusively uh, with folks that, that have OCD. So I, I do part-time private practice, and then I also have, uh, I call it intensive outpatient therapy for folks you know, all around the, the country and sometimes outside the country who don't have access to a therapist at home, they'll sometimes fly to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I'll work with them. I'll see them Monday through Friday every day for usually 60 to 90 minute uh, individual therapy sessions um, for, for three weeks. So it's 15 sessions over three weeks. We do cognitive behavior therapy, and that's also extremely rewarding because these folks come in and often they're, you know, just really suffering with OCD symptoms and you know, I, I don't know that everyone walks out saying, I'll, I'll never have another obsession or compulsion again, but I, I like to feel like um, I give them a, a good shot in the arm as far as getting a lot better so that they can go back um, and, and hopefully have improvements in their quality of life. Well, the last part of this, I, I'll ask you uh, uh, two things. Uh, how people, if they want to get a hold of you, uh, if you want to share some information about any way that they might be able to find you, maybe a website or email or something like that. Also, uh, and I think you really have already mentioned it with the, the foundation, it's really going to their website is the best um, uh, means to find them. And we'll ha I'll have all of that up on the website. In fact, it's already there. I've had it there for a while as far as the foundation. Uh, but if there's anything you want to add about any way that they, if they have any interest in help in getting a hold of you or or... Uh, what you might want to share there. Sure, yeah. So I have a, a website for my, my private practice, which is www.jabramowitz. It's J-A-B-R-A-M-O-W-I-T-Z dot com. And you can read a little bit about my, my background and my qualifications and 
um, my, my practice and um, all my contact information is there. I get, you know, tons of, of emails from folks and phone calls and all that. And I'm very happy to uh, answer questions that, that people have, talk to you over the phone, you know, so people can feel free to, to get in touch. And I will have yours up there also so they can find it there too. Well, Dr. Abramovitz, I really appreciate you being here and sharing with some really good information so that my, uh, my audience can know about the foundation and understand it better and know that it's a great resource, that it was very helpful to us when we got into it because we didn't know what direction to go with any of it, you know, when we, we got into it. So it's been very helpful and I so much appreciate it. Oh, it's been, it's been my pleasure. And if folks are, are listening and you end up coming to Washington, D.C. for the uh, conference this summer, I hope you'll find me. I'm always around giving lots of talks and just kind of wandering around and say hello. Well, thank you again. That concludes this interview podcast. Please leave me a comment or question below. That gives me good direction where to go on future podcasts and interviews. I would love to hear your Invisible Wheelchair stories if you are willing to share it. If you would go to InvisibleWheelchair.com and click on Tell Your Story. I want to remind you that OCD, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, is treatable. I can help you get past OCD. So, if you have heard this interview podcast and other podcasts, and you feel like you need further assistance and would like to spend some time with me working through any issues you have, then feel free to book a session at FocusedHealthyFamily.com or FamilyOCD.com or call me at 704-562-1630. I also offer $85 off of your initial discovery session if you mention that you heard it on this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this interview podcast and will join me for the next one. Remember, keep tapping, talking, and transcending your life to new heights. Thank you, and have a great day.